D-Lab Electronics. Still working on that Ranger 2. So this is part two of the Ranger restoration. In part one, I repaired the VFO and the Vernier tuning assembly. Now we're going to go through and change out the capacitors, pretty much all the electrolytics. And then I'm going to put the keyer platform back on the radio. We're going to fire it up the way it is and make sure that VFO is working and it's stable. Because the last thing I want to do is put it all back together and find out that stupid thing doesn't work. So the first cap we're going to change out is underneath of the keyer platform. Since we have full access, this big snozoramus here is two 15 microfarad caps wired in parallel to give you 30 microfarads. So we're going to change it out with this little guy. So look at the room that we're going to gain. Now keep in mind that this is a negative bias filter cap, all right? So your positive is going to go to ground, okay? The positive, not the negative. You don't want to get that messed up. Now, I'm not going to use this standoff that they did. I don't really like these mechanical grounds, so I'm going to find a nice convenient ground point and eliminate that altogether. So there's the old one, and there's the new one installed. Now I'm going to mount the keyer platform back where it belongs. However, I got a little bit of a problem. When I took it off, I noticed that this mounting post was just floating. Screws missing. So I have to repair that first, and we'll swing the platform back in place. This keyer platform is reinstalled. You can see the new cap right there. So the next step, I'm going to flip this guy up on its side, and we're going to change out all the electrolytics that we can find underneath. So here are our bottom side. We've got our high voltage cap here, which is a 10 microfarad at 700 volts. Got this guy right here, which is always a real pain because it's right underneath the band switch. I thought that was always a bad idea. Anyway, I think this is like a 30 microfarad. And then we have a dual electrolytic up here. And then we've got some hidden down here. I think these may be about 10 microfarads are in the audio section. So we're going to start out with the big pigaramuses, and then we'll move down to the little guys. So we'll do the one here that's underneath the band switch first. Just clip the dude out of him right out. You can see how it's jammed in there. And looky there, there's a hole in the top of the cap. So no doubt he's bad. Now when you get in here and do this, there's no reason to check these caps. Okay, they're old. You don't want them in here. You just change them. All right, so that guy's in. All kinds of clearance now between that and the band switch. So now let's do the high voltage cap. So the original filter cap is a 10 microfarad at 700 volts. Good luck finding that cap. And if you do, you're gonna pay a lot of money. I replace it with a pair of 22 microfarad 500 volt F and T caps with a piece of heat shrink over them. Drop right in there and does the job just fine. So as you recall, the main filter cap was using this post as a ground. This one has a support. And then they had this resistor on this stud trying to get a ground too. I'm not a fan of that at all. So I'm gonna swing this resistor down to the chassis for the ground and the filter cap I'm going to come all the way down here where these caps are grounded and eliminate these posts that can loosen and cause issues. New high voltage cap is installed. And you remember, there used to be two rods here, and this one over here supplied the ground for the cap. That's all been eliminated, and the choke is now just mounted direct. Here's the ground lead now for the filter caps. It goes down here to this lug that's off this terminal board. So that's a nice secure ground. Then the positive side, I swung that back down to the resistor where it was. But then there was another voltage divider resistor that was here and it went to the other um, rod here that's missing now. So what I did is I swung that over to this unused terminal back here. And then I just ran a separate ground wire over to this lug off of this tube socket. So that kind of cleans up the area, opens it up, and allows for the filter cap 
to be mounted. And what I did is I put some drops of adhesive here so it's nice and secure. So there it is. Next cap to replace is this dual 15 microfarad cap which is in the modulator section. You can see that in your schematic. I've already removed the mounting screw, so she's hanging. Now I'm going to change this out with two individual 20 microfarad caps. Here we go. So here's that cap that we're getting ready to replace. Now one word of caution. You would assume that both the negatives go to ground. Well, they don't. On the schematic, this is C59A and B. 59A the negative does go to ground, the 59B, the positive, goes to ground. So don't mess that up, all right? What I'm gonna do is change them out with these individual radio mount caps that are 22 microfarad, 400 volt. So there's the two radios that replace C59A and B. Now, we've gotta go up in this little corner and get rid of this dual 10 microfarad cap, and you'll see this on the audio input tube should be 10 microfarad per section. So it's a little tricky to get to this one, but you have to replace it. All right, there he is. The dual 10 microfarad cap, it's out. I left the leads here, so I know where they go. So I'm gonna get some little radio 10 microfarad guys, change it out, and look at all the room we freed up. The last two electrolytics are installed. There's one right there, little 10 microfarad. The other one is up under here. Yeah, they're a lot of fun to put in. You pretty much got to do it with long nose pliers or tweezers. But you want to install these guys direct. You don't want to put them up here remote and have wires hanging down into there. So it takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it. So I've got all the capacitors installed, and now I'm getting ready to fire this thing up. But I noticed this. This is a 6AQ5 clamper tube. Look at him. He's been doing some serious arc welding. I'm guessing this tube is shorted. So I'm sure not going to let that be in there when I power it up. So I'm going to check it first, but I already can tell it's bad. Alright, so I've fired up the Ranger. And I'm monitoring the output off that VFO. So we are on 80 meters right now. You can see the frequency there. And the old Scoparamus. I'm going to tune the VFO. You can see it's changing like it should. So I always check this before I button her back together and say, oh, my VFO isn't working, right? So now let's go to 40 meters. And there it is. Just make sure that it adjusts. And it does. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to let it sit here and cook. I already verified that the voltage regulator is glowing that pretty purple. And now the question is, is how stable is it? Because you hear about these things that drift all the time. Well, you just saw the reason that they drift. So I'm going to let this bake for a while, and I'll come back and keep checking it. And once I'm happy, I'll start reassembling the Ranger. So at this point I'm going to wrap up part two of the Ranger restoration. I'm going to sit here and let her bake. So part three, we'll get that front panel back on and we'll go through and check tubes and do a power check, modulation check, etc, etc. But this Ranger 2 is very close to being complete. Hope you like the video.